Okay, so I thought I would share with you all today on how to do a simple product photography shot using one light source. In this case, we're going to use a Canon 540EZ speed light flash. And this image here is what we're going to achieve. I'm going to show you how to do this on a budget. And that's it. So here we go. Okay, we're going to do a one light product shoot. And the things that we need is, first we need a digital SLR, okay, and, I'm, and we need a flash, okay, and the items I'll be using is a 540EZ flash. You can use any flash as long as you have manual control over its power settings. In this case I'm using a quantum battery uh, one for the power source for the flash unit. Um, because I'm shooting off camera, I'm using a Yongnu um, RF603C transceiver. This is for Canon. They also make them from Nikon. And you can get these off of eBay. Uh, they're pretty cheap. You can buy them in pairs. You can buy them in sets of four. Um, I want to talk about this, this clamp that I'm using. Uh, my light stand is actually an old uh, reflector holder. I just took the end off and put a clamp on it. And the thing about this clamp I want to point out, you get these on eBay too, they're a couple bucks a piece. Um, so of course I, I bought four of them. But the thing about them that I want you guys to be aware of, in case you're considering, is that they're all plastic. And when you tighten this part down, there's a seam on the inside, on the opposite side. And uh, that has a tendency to crack. So if you tighten this too much, you'll hear it crack. And that's not good if you've got a lot of money vested in your speed light. In my case, I don't. As they are 540 EZs, they are very cheap on eBay, and I'll go into why I'm using those versus a 550 or a 580. Okay. For the background, what I have is some poster board, and you can see it's pretty thin, but it's also pretty it's also pretty durable, um, durable enough to bend it without putting a crease into it. Now you can get that at any craft store, any arts and crafts store, and for the bottom part, I'm using foam core. Um, which is not very thick, very lightweight, and the reason I'm using foam core is because it has a little bit of a sheen to it. You can see some reflection here, but sometimes it shows up really good, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on the angle of your light and whatnot, and how much you expose for the white background. Um, again, very cheap and expensive way to do this. And uh, as to the scene back here, you don't have to worry about that because when we shoot our flash off, the light is going to be bouncing all over this and because it's white it's going to wash that seam out you won't even see it so that's what we're using for a background very cheap very inexpensive another item that we'll be using is a reflector or a bounce card um, this is again foam core and i bought this at the craft store what it is is it's a uh, it's for making your own custom greeting cards so it comes with these these flaps on either side that you can open up and have the card inside and they're only a couple of bucks a piece so I bought two of them and I taped them together on one end and I cut a hole into it so I can shoot through it so what we're going to do is we're going to put this in front of our product and we're going to space them out like this and then what happens is when we bounce the light off the ceiling it's going to flood all this area, the background and, the, and the, the floor or the bottom portion with light and then the light's going to come forward and it's going to bounce off the foam core to the front of our watch face and I'll demonstrate what that looks like with and without the actual bounce card. Again another very cheap and expensive way to achieve the effect we want. As I said we're using uh, these wireless radio transceivers. I have one on the hot shoe on the camera. I'm using a Canon uh, 50D and we have another one mounted onto this speed light and as a transceiver that means that no matter whether it's here or here one is a transmitter and one is a receiver and you can swap them back and forth all day long and they'll still function and communicate with each other to achieve what we want a question I had uh, was can we achieve the same effect without a light stand can we do it with a speed light or flash on the camera directly and the answer to that is yes and I will demonstrate um, how we will get the exact same results whether we're on camera or on a light stand. It basically boils down to where you're pointing 
your speed light to. In this case, we're pointing up to the ceiling, not right into the corner, but slightly above it. And we'll see the results of both of those in the next couple of shots. Okay, for those of you who have been around for a while, you're probably asking yourself, why are you using a 540EZ? Those are not supposed to work with digital cameras. And this is true to a certain extent. What I have found is that because these are from the old film analog day, analog film days, um, the ATTL does not communicate with the ETTL of digital cameras. However, they will sync up to your hot shoe, and they do work in manual mode. So because I do most of my shooting off camera via transceivers, and I'm always working in manual mode, see it's in manual mode, um, and I can control the power output of it. It's a cost-effective way to achieve what I need to do. Um, the guide number or the power output of these is very slightly less than that of a 550EX. So the cost of these on eBay, I've got four of these, and I don't think I paid more than forty dollars for any one of them. I have four of them, and in total, I spent less than I would for a used 550EX, and which gives me more options and more control and uh, yeah that's just the way I chose to go. Another question you might be thinking about is do I have to use a Canon flash with a Canon camera and the answer is no if you're using a off-camera system in this case the transceiver is communicating to this transceiver so whatever flash is attached to it is going to fire that flash. So you can use a Nikon flash, you could use a METS flash, you could use a Sunpack, a Vivitar, whatever, something cheap. As long as you have manual control of its power output, that's the key thing. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to achieve what we're going to do here and have a, a, a result that you'll be happy with. Okay, let's do our first shot and I'm going to put you up here into the viewfinder. And you're going to see me focus, fire. Now, that is without the bounce card. And I will show you in Lightroom. I am tethered to Lightroom. That's not something you have to do. It's just what I choose to do through convenience. And now we'll do one with the bounce card. I have the uh, foam core bounce card set up. And we can peek through there and see there's our product. And we're shooting through the hole and you can see that it basically surrounds it. You don't necessarily have to have these flaps in the back. Um, they're just there for stability and um, it doesn't really affect any of the, any kind of wrap around. Um, you just want to be careful that you're not too far behind your product like this because you might get some shadow from the light bouncing off the back. So we'll just move those apart and there we are. So let's go ahead and take our next shot. And then let's go look at the computer and compare the differences. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how to do this with the on camera flash. I'm still using my battery pack because I don't have any batteries, but imagine that on your flash you're using internal batteries rather than an external battery pack. This is still the 540EZ, and I'm going to try to do this with one hand on the camera and one hand on the video. Let's see if we can frame this up. It's a little difficult. Let's see. Here we go. And that's, you can see, pretty much the exact same exposure. I'll show you what it looks like in life. Okay, to wrap up, this is where we started. This is the first shot on the tripod with the off-camera flash with no bounce card. And what we can see is that there's a pretty harsh shadow down here and the fossil logo is kind of hard to read. And remember, this is one light bouncing off the ceiling, okay? Now we add the bounce card, and we see a huge difference. This shadow down here is much softer, much nicer. The fossil logo is much more visible and readable, and the exposure looks overall much better. But the only problem we have now is that the reflector is, is, re, is reflecting in the glass of the face of the, of the uh, watch. And some people will be like, no, oh, that's all right. And some people will be like, no, that's ugly. So we can, we can play around with it. But before, no reflector. With reflector, 
Now let's go to the on-camera flash. This is what the on-camera flash looks like. Okay. Again, same exact exposure. We're getting the, the same results. This time I'm shooting at a slightly different angle because it's handheld. And because I'm shooting video at the same time, I couldn't really get a whole lot of, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of pointing and shooting. But we still have this reflection of, of the, uh, the reflector in the watch face. And this, uh, I don't like this. So playing around with it, I got another one. And this one is a bit better. In fact, it's much better. But to me, this is looking a bit flat. But because we're in Lightroom, and of course we can do this in Photoshop as well, we can do something like bump up the clarity, maybe one, maybe two. That's looking better. Let's bump up the vibrance and loading. And we'll do one more. Still loading. And that to me looks much better already. So you can achieve a really decent product shot using one light and you don't have to spend a lot of money. I hope you found this helpful and good luck in your shooting efforts.